Good morning, Branches Church. My name is Joe Fugate. I'm a board member here at the Branches. Uh, on behalf of everyone here at the Branches, I just want to welcome you uh, to church this morning. Uh, we are so thankful that you are here, uh, that you have chosen to spend your Sunday morning uh, in fellowship and worship with us. It's a, it's a great thing. Uh, as you walked in, uh, you should have picked up a connection card if you could fill that out. There are some black boxes uh, near the entrance to the gymnasium that you can drop those in. Uh, there's a spot on there that will allow you to fill out prayer requests. We have a prayer team that will pray confidentially over those uh, for you. Uh, we have some really great things coming Coming up here in the next few months. Uh, today, right after service, is Friendsgiving. Uh, it is a great time to just go and have some fellowship, to eat with people. Uh, even if you didn't bring a dish, that's totally fine. Uh, please come hang out with us in room 139 after service. Uh, if we could, before we go to Friendsgiving, uh, if everybody could help uh, tear down uh, really quickly, that will help all of the volunteers who are on the tear down team uh, get out of here and into uh, our Friendsgiving celebration. Uh, if uh, you look on your uh, chairs, there is a, uh, an invite card for the Christmas activities that we have coming up this year. Uh, on the back is a series of dates that uh, are really important. Uh, December 4th will be Ugly Sweater Sunday. Uh, December 11th will be Stuff the Stocking Sunday. That'll be similar to what we did for Halloween where the outside of the gymnasium will be lined with tables uh, where kids can stuff stockings. Uh, December 18th will be Twigs Sunday. December 21st will be the Eve Before You Leave. Uh, on the connection card, it says 6.30. Uh, that's a typo. It is at 6 p.m. here in room 139. And then on December 24th, Christmas Eve, uh, we'll have two services, one at 1 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. Uh, that will also be in room 139. Uh, also in December, uh, many of you have come to the branches for a really long time. Uh, and uh, this has been your unofficial church home. Uh, you've given a lot of time and energy and love to this place, and now we want to offer everyone an opportunity who is not already a member to become a member. On December 4th, after the service, there will be a, a membership class. We haven't done this in a really long time, and I think this is long overdue. Uh, if you would like to become a member, it is a class where you'll get to learn what it means to be a member of a church here at the branches. Uh, if you want uh, to just learn more about membership in a church, this is going to be a really cl good class for you to go to. Uh, Pastor Alex is going to be leading that. Uh, it's not uh, something that you go to and then you are obligated to become a member. Uh, it is just a new member class uh, that if you want to become a member, uh, it's going to allow you to, to learn what we stand for at the branches, uh, just to learn what it means to be part of a church family. And if you choose to uh, become a member of the branches, then on January 8th, we'll have a new member Sunday where we will get to uh, congratulate all those people. I think that's it. So if you would, uh, I'm going to pray and then we're going to get into some worship. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for everything that you have just uh, blessed our lives with. I thank you for this church. I thank you for the family that we have become. I thank you for uh, your love and your provision and just your, your steadfast faith. God, I pray that we can open our minds and our hearts to you this morning and that we can honor and glorify you in everything that we do. You are amazing and we love you and we just turn everything in our hearts over to you this morning. In your holy name we pray, amen. Good morning, would you stand with me and we'll get some worship going.
praise God, from whom all blessings flow. And praise Him, and praise Him for the wonders of His love. And praise God, praise. morning guys thanks for being here today we're gonna move on and sing some more songs please open up your hearts as you're singing these songs all right blessing blessings to be here today
Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your, great, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Branches. My name is Alex Hershey. I am the pastor here, so so glad that you're all here. Oh my goodness, look at you all. Hey, it's cold out this morning. I don't know, when I am cold, I like, I just like get really grouchy. So it's a really great season to be around me, everyone. But what I'm learning is that I need lots of sunshine. So thank goodness there's sunshine. But really quick, I know that we've all like settled in, but I'm gonna have you all stand back up because I want you to, I want to see smiling faces this morning. And you have such good smiling faces. So can you greet those around you and tell them that you're so glad they're here and what? And that Jesus loves you. Can you greet those around you? Meet some new people. And uh, if you could do this to three, four, or five people, that'd be fantastic. Let's get rowdy in here. There you go. And for all you introverts, you are now allowed to sit down and just not worry about interacting with anybody else for at least 20 minutes. So anyway, awesome. So glad that you're here this morning. It is a fun Sunday here in the life of the branches. We have had uh, a two-year uh, break from this, but today we get to have our friends giving again, and we're super excited about this. Woohoo! And uh, we do friends giving in a fun way. We have, uh, it's just a, a stress-free Thanksgiving, which I know that we're entering into seasons where we're, we're traveling all over, we're having people come to our houses, but we have a fun Thanksgiving uh, right after church you just come don't worry don't even think about it don't even like talk to your spouse or your children or your grand just go we're, just, we're staying we're gonna have a lot of fun because uh we're gonna eat and then th the jared wade who was on bass player i call him the jared wade also top five funniest people ever to have lived will be emceeing and leading us in uh trivia the turkey trivia and your reward uh, is the golden turkey so i mean if you weren't already convinced to stay, now you're, this is thing, this thing has lasted for years, and it's been in the Chloris house for the last few years. So anyway, I'll just put this up here, uh, and you can take a look at it all through service, but we're really excited for that. And then uh, after this Sunday, we get to jump right into the Advent season, which is the Christmas season here at the Branches. So next Sunday, we'll have uh, some Christmas music and some Christmas decorations, and we'll begin that journey towards Christmas. I love Christmas. I absolutely love Christmas. Uh, I've heard it say that some people have even called it's the most wonderful time of the year. I've just heard that. I don't know. But it's a great season to be able to hear the Christmas story is life-changing. It's filled with miracles, uh, and it's filled with you hearing that you can experience miracles as well. And so I encourage you to come. We do have a blast through Christmas with ugly sweaters, with Stuff the Stockings, with the Twix Kid Sings, and then our awesome family-friendly Christmas Eve services. But it's just a focusing on the story of Jesus and how he came into this world because he loves you. He loves you. And that is a good thing to celebrate. So I always say this, and I truly mean it. This is a season where people, your coworkers, your family, your friends are all expecting you to invite them. Everybody knows this. They all watch Charlie Brown. They all watch Home Alone. Even Kevin McAllister, he doesn't have parents, but he knows he needs to end up at church. You know what I mean? So they're all waiting for those invitations from you, and it's a great time to be able to invite those to experience the love and the grace of Jesus. Uh, so I want to just uh, stop right there because now I want to transition back to uh, back to Christmas, or back to Thanksgiving, and it's simply this. These last few years have been hard for many of us, and yet God's faithfulness has still remained. Maybe even we can say it's not even been the last few years, it's been the last six months, or the last month, or this past week. But I want you to hear this, and I'm learning this still as I grow in my faith and understanding of what it means to follow Jesus, that even in the midst of storms, even in the midst of constant change, I've learned that's something I'll never be able to escape, is the constant change of life. I still need to look around and see all the blessings that God has been able to provide for me in my life and to see that God is faithful even in the midst of so much around us. So I would invite you right now, whatever storm may be going on or what storms you've been on through in your past, like just to pause right here and to think of what you can give thanks to God for. There are so many good things. And I want you to think about that, all right? And so we're going to close our eyes. And if you feel comfortable, just put your hands out in front of you. 
and just be able to say, Lord, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. So just would you do that with me? Close your eyes and put your hands out in front of you. Some of you are bolder than others. Keep them close. Put them out. Just take them out there. And I'm just going to be still for, for just a few seconds here. God, we come and we're thankful. We're thankful because of the, the air we're breathing right now. We're thankful that we get to sit next to a family member or a friend. We're thankful for the coffee. Oh, we're thankful for the coffee this morning. We're thankful for the little things because we know that you're faithful in the midst of storms, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of what is next on our plate. But Lord, you are, you are faithful. And so we just want to come to you right now and just say thank you. Thank you that you haven't left us or abandoned us or forgotten about us, but that you love us and that you care for us. That you're always ready to give us that warm embrace when, our, when we have tears trickling down our face. And so, God, we come before you right now and say thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember my parents dropping me off at college for the very first time. I was uh, sort of a send-off at my school, or where I went to school, where parents came, and there was uh, moments where they would go off and, and learn about the school, and then I would be with trying to make friends, you know, and doing all this other thing and learning about school. And even though my school wasn't that far away, I didn't know anybody at my school. It wasn't a large school, but I didn't know anybody there. So it was for the first time in my life, being left in a place where I didn't know anyone. Some of you can relate about that. Some of that can be something where it's not just college, but it's a workplace or moving to a new town for the first time. But I remember in that moment, it was solo. There was nobody I could just go and be like, remember that time in fifth grade? Or remember when we got together and we did this? I, there was nobody. It was in that moment, everything was new. There was no deep-rooted, we went to kindergarten together friendships. It was all on my own. And I remember in that moment, uh, as they left, trying to hold it together, which I think I did until I got to my dorm room and I realized my roommate wasn't there, so I could let a few tears be shed, right? And at any good university, right, they have all these mixers that you can go to and all these things that you can go and meet people and travel or, or go to different dorms and all this stuff. And I remember doing all of that, and I just still remember, like, well, this might be a lonely semester, you know? And of course, that timeline was just 12 hours, you know? So anyway, but that's, that's how it goes sometimes at that stage of life. But I remember uh, there was one evening in that first week where I was able to go and it was fun. There was live music and there was, there was food and, and people were having a good time. And uh, all that stuff. It was a Christian university, so when I say good time, it was like they were like going crazy with Sprite. It was just awesome. It was bonkers, anyway. And so, uh, and so we were coming back, and by Sprite, I meant water. It was just water and bread. Anyway, so, uh, and when I mean water, it was grape juice, and we just always had communion. It was fun. Anyway, so, but I remember coming back, uh, and I remember coming back, and it was at that moment, uh, one of the RAs, he pulled me aside and said, hey, have you met this guy? I go, no. He's like, he's just on the floor above you. He's just on the floor above you. I think you guys would like each other. I think I saw you both bringing guitars when you moved in. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I just started talking to this guy. And, uh, and I was like, what was your name? And he's like, Jason. I'm like, I'm Alex. And we just started talking. And, uh, and we started talking about, guess who, what bands? Pearl Jam. We started talking about Pearl Jam and Radiohead and all this stuff. And then he tells me, he's like, well, I went this past summer. And I got to see R.E.M. and there was this little band called Wilco that opened up for him. And I remember at that moment then we began, which is Wilco is my favorite band. And so like, and then in that moment, I remember we just never were really apart. He was from South Dakota. I'd always wanted to be friends with a cowboy. So no, he wasn't a cowboy. But I always wanted, and so, and we just hung out. And I remember the effort that I had to put into this, right? 
when you first make a friend, there's a lot of effort. You're like, no, I like to sleep in. And then he's like, well, I get up at this time to have breakfast. I'm like, I'll get up and have breakfast at this. He's like, I like to do this. I'm like, well, I like to. And, and I just remember all of those things uh, through all of those beginning stages of drawing in this friendship. And it was one of those things that I didn't know 23 years ago that when we met, it would be something that would then, 23 years later, getting text every so often and calling each other every so often, often, right? Not as often. But every time I either laugh when I receive something or I get tears in my eyes every time I receive something. It began this friendship that has lasted decades now. And it's a beautiful friendship. And really, all we were was just two guys that I was studying to be an elementary ed teacher. He was studying, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he was studying, to be honest, in college. But he was a good student, which was good for me. But he was really good. And we had no idea. And, and I just share this a little bit, too. We had no idea what we wanted to do. But I will say this. We knew that we loved Jesus. We knew that we loved Jesus. One of the things that I look back in those beginning days is that we always would worship together. No matter where it was, it, we would go to the African-American church often when we first became friends, and then we would go to another church because we heard there might be pretty girls there. We went to all these different places. I remember when we were frustrated and we didn't know where to go, we would just grab our guitars and we'd go out and we'd worship Jesus. Did I say at that time, neither one of us were saying we wanted careers in ministry or anything. Well, my friend Jason is now a professor of theology back in South Dakota. It's pretty amazing how God works through friends. It's pretty amazing how God, I believe, has our lives intersect with other people's lives. I, I truly believe God's timing is always the miracle. When we meet people and how we meet people is such a great thing. I think one of the greatest gifts that we can receive is friendships. Because it's one of these moments where we aren't born and we're, we have a family, which is a beautiful thing. But it's something where we have to choose to become vulnerable. It's also something where we have to choose to say, I'm going to be fully invested in you. Because when we're not fully invested in other people, they probably won't be our friends for that long. So friendship is this beautiful thing that we get to have. And as we wrap up our, our sermon series on We Are Family... It's nice to wrap up on a Sunday like this that friends who become family, right? And how do we have good godly relationships in our lives? Friends are important. We see in Proverbs, it says, The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. I'm forever grateful for my friend Jason. In a season that you can go many different directions in life, we made sure to keep each other accountable to have a deep, deep relationship with Jesus. Even at moments where we even had those tough questions about who Jesus is and is Jesus real, we were able to have these conversations knowing that we could trust each other and having that conversation. This is something that I think is so wise, though, as we look at the friendships that we form and the friendships that we keep. Are we willing to have that friendship that is willing to give us the way to point us to know who Jesus is more every day? And as I've looked back into my life over the last few decades as well, I'm so blessed that God has given to me friendships that are always foundational in Jesus. It is so good. It is so good for us to understand. Friendships are what lead us to where we need to be. Um, I do think, though, that there are times where we can look at life and we can also say, I had a friend and now I don't have a friend. So like, oh, let's we'll just talk all about the good stuff today about friendships, right? Oh, I wish we could. But we have that. And we know that there are times, if we're honest with ourselves, there are times that it's their fault that we're no longer friends. Amen. But then we also know it's our fault at times where I no longer that person is our friend. We've all been there. It's all happened. We've all lived through middle school years, but also into the adult years as well. And sometimes even in the adult years, it's even harder because we gain, uh, we gain growth and we gain different things. We, we start families. We have start careers. We move. And friendships that used to be so solid are maybe not as solid as they used to. And that can be a hard thing to, to understand and, to, and to, to really figure out. The next thing is this. 
We all just lived through a pandemic and a few other things in those years where all of a sudden people who we thought we were on the same page with in life maybe posted something on social media like, oh, so that's the conspiracy you're going with. Sounds good. <laughs> Are we still on the same page here? And so we understand that friendships can evolve and change all the time. And there can be a maneuvering of, of different pieces through it all. I wish my friend Jason would hurry up and get uh, a teaching job here in Indianapolis. I don't know what his problem is because it's so nice to be close. But just the way the life is, we're apart. And so it's not that same where we go and have three meals a day like when we first met, right? So friendships evolve and the change. Sometimes they get closer. Sometimes they pull us apart. But I want us to talk about how is it that God wants us to be a healthy friend, a healthy friend to others. And so if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open them up to John 15. We're going to look at this chapter. This is one of the best chapters in all of the Bible. It's also one of the best places to find a name for a church in John 15. Amen? You all supposed to say, yeah, because that's where the branches is. Yeah, you're right. Chapter, verse, chapter 15, verse 5 is that. But we're going to be looking at verses. I'm sorry, we're going to be looking at the second half of that in verses 12 through 17. So if you have your Bibles or if you have your phone, you can grab that open and uh, we'll look at that. There we go. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, here we go. You can follow along on the screen as well. well let me read this to you. 12 through 17. There we go. Oh, man. My commandment is this. My commandment is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friend if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whenever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my commandment. Love each other. Oh, I love that. Anytime uh, we get to talk about love, that is a good thing, and how we love each other and how friendships are this way. The first thing I want you to hear is this. The first thing I want you to hear is this. Jesus desires to be your friend and he desires to be your friend because he loves you he cares for you he wants you to move beyond just working for him and serving him but he wants you to have a, a relationship with him and this is like here at the branches we want people to have a deep relationship with jesus so that then they can branch out to others and so as we have a deep relationship with jesus we understand that we're loved and so that we can then take this love to others it is this this is a flow of gaining friendships I really believe that Jesus works this way. He wants us to love him, to understand that we have a friendship with him, and then we can go out to know more people. One of the things that always, I always get sad about is when people are like, I don't like people. I'm like, it's the greatest gift from God, is people. That's the greatest thing. If you want to see the face of God, go out amongst his people. And you will grow in that. I love it. I love meeting new people. And I love making people laugh. And I love people when they make me laugh. It is just great. There is joy in knowing who people are. There is joy in seeing who God has in store for you. So never be like, oh, I remember I worked with someone one time. who was like, oh, ministry would be great if it wasn't for the people. I'm like, maybe you shouldn't be in ministry. And it's all about the people. It's all about Jesus and people. So let's do this. And so I love it about Jesus that, he, that we get to have this. But I want us to look at right now four characteristics of, of a, what things that have uh, in having a godly friendship. Having a godly friendship. What does that look like? The first one is this. Love one another. Love one another. Have you ever been in a friendship where the person didn't love you? Not a good friendship. They care about mo themselves more than you. It becomes a very selfish relationship. One-sided. That's what happens when we don't love our friends. We have to learn to love them. If we're only about our agenda, then it is, it is one that is not a good friendship. How does Jesus say it? What is a unique friendship? That you would lay your life down. To love one another means that you're willing to sacrifice, right? You're willing to sacrifice for that friend. I know that there's people in this room who have dropped everything to go and help people. 
I know there's people in this room when they have those friendships, they make sure that their schedule revolves around certain moments so that they can help their friend when their friend is in need. They sacrifice things because they want that friendship to be important to them. Some of you might even this week, you'll be like, oh man, I don't know how we're going to fit this into the schedule, but I need to go see my friend from high school as we go home, and it's going to be hard because mom and dad will be like, I thought you wanted to see it, but you want to see this friendship, and it's, it, you, you know you need to... St-. There is sacrifice because you love each other in a friendship. It is so important. Now, just really quick, I want to pause because right now you might be just thinking about yourself, and you're like, yeah. Or you might be not thinking about yourself, but you might be thinking about other people. Like, well, if they would love me more, I'd be a better, maybe they need me to make some plans. Maybe they need a sacrifice for me. So I want, I want you to pull away from that and think about how you are being a friend towards others. Okay? I'm more, more on you, not the friends that you want to kick through the door right now. So, okay? So think about how you're being a friend. Okay. So unpause, unpause. Back to this. So are you, do you have a sacrificing spirit when it comes to your friends? Are you willing to help out? Are you willing to help out? The second is this, obey commandments. You're like, oh, that's, that sounds cool. I, I, I was looking at this, and, I, and you see as Jesus is talking about what does it mean to be a good friend, there, there, is a, there is this idea that like he's saying, if you obey my commandments, you no longer become a servant, but you become a friend. As you follow Jesus closer, the more you move away from just being that servant and that taskmaster, but you now are friendships, that you do things in a way where you have a a fun and giving spirit to them. And I love this. I love this. Obey the commandments. And in some ways, I think it's a friendship code, right? Bro code. I don't know. Girl code. I don't know what they are. But a friendship code. It's really important. And I think following the teachings of Jesus is a great code to follow right? It's pretty amazing, like, that you have grace over grudges. That's a pretty good thing. Instead of fighting, you desire peace, right? That's a really good thing. Instead of uh, wishing that, you know, you could do what they always get to do, they get to go on those, you, you just are excited for them. You have joy for them. You lift them up. Good job on your promotion, I haven't been promoted in years. You know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh, I'm excited for you. Think about that. As you follow those commandments together, as you obey those commandments of of lifting each other up, instead of dragging them down, getting as excited as they achieve something because you're thrilled for them. Obey those commandments together. This is great. Seek out the commandments of God, and you will become great friends together. The third thing is this, is that you will bear fruit. I like this. We spelled bear. Yeah, okay. So you'll bear fruit. You'll move beyond just uh, being servants and into friendships, but you'll bear fruit. It was awesome. In 2019, uh, our friend who introduced Krista and I got married for the first time. And so we drove over. We were like, we're not missing this wedding at all. And we drove all the way to Peoria, Illinois on a Friday, and we came back late Saturday night because I always seem to work on Sunday mornings. But anyway, we weren't going to miss this at all. And so we went over there, and we had no idea who was going to be there. And so we knew some people might not be there, and we get there. And this is a college friend, and it's now, you know, almost 20 years later, and we're like, we pull in, and we get there, and like, it is like stepping back in time, Right? And it was so fun. Like, we got to see some friends. And, and my friend, he, ran, he run, runs a community center in, in, in Peoria. And uh, he was marrying someone who helps immigrants when they come into. So, like, the wedding already was super international, super, like, because they were just inviting all these, all these people in their community that hadn't. Anyway, it was, any, it was in the com- wedding was in the community center. There was Little Caesars Pizza. There was African food. It was just awesome. So there's all the, the world that they had touched. And as I was sat in that circle, as we were sitting around and all playing our instruments, pretending that we could have become rock stars, which we hadn't. And so it was fun going around. Besides us all looking a little bit older and grayer as we looked around the circle, except for Sam who lives in California and looks the exact same. Maybe that's the California weather. I don't know. But like all of us, I was just looking like he works, he's activists and this is a a professor and this is a lawyer who helps people and this is someone who runs a community center and this is, and I went around and I was just so amazed 
that our friendship group, what it was all around the country now, was just trying to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Trying to live not focused upon self, but on focus on others. And I'm always surprised by that, to be honest, because when we were in college, I felt like we were a pretty selfish bunch. (laughs) But I think we challenged each other to take our eyes off of self and put them on others and put them on Christ. And that's the challenge for us. As we have friendships, are we raising each other up so that we will have great reward with Jesus and that we will bear fruit in the community that we're a part of, that we will lift them up and lift their, their, their families up as well to bear fruit in this world. The next thing is this. Understand truth, right? We see this. Understand truth. Seek truth. If you're being truthful with each other, this is important. When friendships don't have truth being a high value, it'll be one that is filled with hurt. When friendships aren't able to be real with each other, if you want to use that language, which I think is good, then you'll never get to know each other. Being truthful in friendship is important. It moves beyond the surface level, and it begins to go deeper with each other. This is where I believe Or this is where I've felt hurt in life. This is where I've felt great joy in life. And when we are able to have that truth in our life, be understanders and seekers of truth, we'll begin to have deep relationships. I believe this is what we need from friends. We need friends to lift us up and speak into our lives. We need friends that will help us to grow and to understand who we are and how we can become even something better than what we've ever believed. C.S. Lewis says this, Friendship is the instrument by which God reveals to each of us the beauties of others. Friendship allows for us to see beyond just us and to see others in a way where we can become fruitful and beautiful together. God wants us to have friends. It's true. God wants us to have good friends, deep friends. God wants us to be in community with each other. And why does he want this? He wants this because that's why Jesus came into this world. We're going to get into it the next few weeks. But Jesus came into this world not to be your Lord over you and be your taskmaster. We're reminded in John 15 that Jesus came into this world because he wants to be your friend. Jesus wants to be your friend. The classic hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That's exactly what Jesus wants from us. And if we can have that deep relationship with Jesus, we then begin to carry it over into all of our other relationships. And we begin to see the joy of community, the excitement that we have, a life where we don't live by ourselves, but a life that we embrace with others, where we care for each other and we love each other and we encourage them to be more than what they ever could imagine. And so, this is it. This is is, is something that I want you to hear. If you're feeling, where are my friends? The first step is you got to step out. You got to do it. I've literally had moments in recent years with other pastors. I've sort of gone through a transition. I've had a lot of pastor friends leave ministry or move on to other things where I've literally gone up to someone, and you you guys know this guy because he's spoken to Evan. He he spoke into Evan and Evan and Evan. Anyway, but we had a a last week at their high school or middle school retreat, and I just said, Evan, will you be my friend? (laughs) You can laugh at me, but it's true. I was just like, dude, you're a cool guy. Will you be my friend? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I've done that with several other people. Oh, dude, why not? Why not? If you're ready for friendships, ask, ask for it. I think Christians need to be a bit bolder. It's a good thing. God wants you to have deep and good friendships. So if you're feeling on the fence about where friendships are, just step out there and say it. And say, it. I'm ready to grow into a closer connection with you. 
This is a desire for us. And so then right now, that's the first thing. The second thing is this. The second action is this. If you have your phones, you can grab them out. If there's a friend that you haven't talked to in a while that you really appreciate, I encourage you to text them right now. Grab your phones out right now. Snap them if you need to. And just that one friend. They might be sitting next to you. They might be sitting somewhere else states over. I don't know. But just say, hey, you don't have to say the pastor's talking about French today. All you got to say is, hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I'm glad you're my friend. Or just send them a dumb meme. I don't care what you do. Just send your friend something just so that you know that you love them. All right? Can you do that? I'm t- telling you, you, get your phones out. You can do it. It's good. But I hope also on this day that we're reminded that God will provide a community for you as you open up your heart to receive. Would you pray with me? Oh, God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all uh, how you work in our lives and how you stir in our lives and how you move in our lives. And I'm grateful. We're grateful for friendship. We're grateful for fun. And we're grateful that we are able to have a deeper life with you and we can have a, friend, a life that where you call us your friend. How beautiful is that? And so we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, as the band comes forward, uh, as we come to receive communion this morning, uh, again, what we do here at the branches is that anybody who believes and confesses that Jesus Christ is their Lord is welcome to come forward and take. And what we do is that we have uh, little uh, cups of juice and little wafers. And as you come forward, because it's always good to come forward and receive, uh, you just bring it right back to your seat, sing with the band, I'll pop back up on the stage and we'll take communion together as a community, okay? But as we come forward, as we take communion, let us bring forward our burdens and our sins and leave them up here. And as we go back to our seats, let us know that God is filling us up with his great love. Come and receive. Amen.
No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't hide up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't hide up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, but still I found peace. And I deny, I could turn it, I could serve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, As Jesus sat around with his disciples the night before he went to the cross, he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. We will do the same. And then Jesus, a little later in the meal, he passed the cup around and he said, take and drink in remembrance of me. So we eat and we drink and we remember. Remember that Jesus loves us so much that he laid his life down for us so that we can leave this place knowing that our sins and our burdens no longer have to weigh us down, but that we can be set free. What a beautiful thing that is. Grace is real. Grace is real. Everybody say that. Grace is real. And I can receive. I can receive. Let us receive the grace of God and let us leave this place with the love of Jesus on our hearts. Amen. All right, we're about to have fun Friendsgiving, and we're going to need your help to tear down, okay? So if you could help with chairs or if you feel comfortable coming up with cords, even if you don't feel comfortable, you can do that. But let's have some fun, and uh, so glad you're here. Have great weeks, everyone. Go with Jesus. Amen.